So in this video, we're going to look at some examples using the rules we learned in the last video. So again, it's all about trigonom trigonometric identities. So a quick run, run through of the rules we said. So um, there are the trigonometric identities you have to learn off, and then there's the method you're going to use when you're trying to solve them. So uh, you have to write everything in sine and cos. It just makes things a lot easier. You can write things like sine theta over cos theta. You can write that in the form sine theta multiplied by 1 over cos theta. That can make things easier. And if you want to turn two terms into one, then you have to look for a common denominator. And that's the same if you want to term, turn one term into two, you have to see the common denominator as well. So again, hopefully these all make, stake, make sense when we look at some examples. So look at this example here to start. We have sec of a minus tan of a sine of a is equal to cos of a, okay? So they'll give you a question like that, and they'll ask you to prove it, okay? So what you're supposed to do on this, in this case is, I'll go dark blue, this is the right-hand side, or HS the right-hand side. You don't touch this at all, okay? All you do is you manipulate the left-hand side, so LHS. You just keep playing around with these things until eventually you get cos of a, and then you'll have left-hand side is equal to right-hand side, and you'll be done. So you don't bring this cos of A into it or anything like that, okay? So leave the right-hand side the way it is and just maneuver the left-hand side, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write everything in terms of sine and cos. So it's the first step. So sec of A is one over cos of A, okay? And that's minus tan of A, which is sine of A over cos of A. And then that's multiplied by sine of A. Okay, so I'm not even going to write the right hand side at all. I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay, the next step, I'm just going to multiply sine of a by sine of a. So we're going to have 1 over cos of a minus sine squared a over cos of a. And again, if you haven't seen sine squared before, that just means sine of a. So wait, let's do a little thing here. Sine squared of a is equal to sine of a squared. Okay, and they just write it like that so you know that the whole thing is squared and not just the angle because sine of a squared and I'm just going to write is not equal to sine of a squared and that's why just to differentiate those two because they're very different things. That's just the a is squared, that's the whole thing is squared. So to avoid that they just write sine squared of a. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Um, and now, okay, wait, so I'm actually just going to get rid of that. Now we want to turn this thing, which is which has two terms in it, into this thing on the right, which only has one term. So that's this rule I was talking about. We have to look for a common denominator because we have to put it into one single fraction um, so it can look like the right-hand side. Okay. So in this case, cos of a is already our common denominator. So we can just say then, we can say 1 minus sine squared of a all divided by cos of a. Okay. So that's back to adding two fractions together. Um, and now 1 minus sine squared a, so hopefully we remember, I'll just go dot, dot, dot. So sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Then from that, we can find out that cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So I have theta written here, but it doesn't really matter. You can, you can have a as well if you'd like. So that means 1 minus sine squared a and this is one minus sine squared theta, that means that this is equal to cos squared a. So I'm gonna write that down. It's gonna be cos squared a over cos of a. Yeah, because if, if you wanna write this out, cos squared of a is equal to one minus sine squared of a. Same reason for this here. Now this here, that's equal to, uh, right, more line, cos of a multiplied by ooh, cos of a, so that's cos of a squared divided by cos of a. So if you want to uh, get rid of one on top so that they cancel out on top and the bottom, we're just left with cos of a is equal to right hand side. Okay, and that's the question done. That's the answer. So do you guys all see that? So there's a the kind of a methodology you go through bit by bit, try to apply these rules. Um, and then you have to make the left hand side equal to right hand side. So again, it's each individual bit isn't too hard. It's all about seeing it all all together and kind of finally coming across the answer. So this this time I got the answer straight away. Sometimes it won't be so simple. You might have to mess around loads first, but just keep trying different things. You'll get marks along the way for uh, attempting and going on the right track, and then hopefully eventually you'll stumble across the answer. Basically, is the the way to do them. So I'll just give you one quick example. So I'm actually just going to go across to do it. 
and we'll do purple. The second example we're going to try and prove is that is that tan of theta plus sine of theta divided by sec of theta plus one is all equal to sine of theta. Okay, so again, we're going to leave the right hand side as it is and just try to uh, work around with the left hand side. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the first rule. So, we're going to write everything in terms of sine and cos. So, that's going to be sine of theta over cos of theta plus sine of theta divided by 1 over cos of theta plus 1. Yeah, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by cos of theta. So it's going to look a bit weird, but I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to say multiply the, co the top by cos of theta and the bottom by cos of theta. Okay, and you're allowed to do that because multiplying by cos of theta over cos of theta, that's just like multiplying by 1, so we're not changing anything. Okay, so I'll continue down here in blue. So if you multiply cos of theta by this fraction here, you're going to get sine of theta because it'll cancel on the top and the bottom. And then if you multiply sine or cos of theta by sine of theta, you're going to get sine theta cos theta. Okay, divide that by uh, whatever's in the bottom. So it's cos theta multiplied by one over cos theta. That's just going to be one because we multiply um, something by one over that something. You'll just get one always. Yeah. Uh, so the cos theta will cancel on the top and the bottom. You're left with the one. And then one multiplied by cos of theta is cos of theta. Okay. The last step now is we're actually just going to factor it. So let's go bright blue. So to factor this, we're going to factor sine theta out of the top. So it's going to be sine theta. Okay. So you divide sine theta into both these things. You're going to find one plus cos of theta. And if you want, you can check that. So if you multiply sine theta by one, you get sine theta. If you multiply sine theta by cos of theta, we get sine theta cos theta. So that's all good. And that's going to be divided by nothing changed in the bottom. 1 over cos of theta. And I'm going to drop brackets around that. I'm going to cancel this as well. And we're left with sine of theta. And that's equal to the right hand side. That's what we were trying to prove in the first place. That's equal to sine theta. Okay, so does that methodology make sense? That's another little trick that you might see pop up uh, every now and then. You have to multiply the top and the bottom by something. Uh, that'll generally happen if you have a fraction. So if you have one over cos theta and something over cos theta here, you have to multiply the top and the bottom by cos theta. Sometimes you have to multiply it by more than just one thing, uh, but hopefully we'll look at an example like that. So again, hopefully that, um, yeah, hopefully that video helped. This a video on trigonometric identities. Just remember the there's five or six, there's five things in boxes in the last video you definitely need to know off by heart. And then this methodology and every video or every question should be more or less the same, just kind of working through it. And eventually, hopefully, you stumble across the answer. So we'll look at more examples next.